Right, I'm here with William Durning, candidate for the regional council election that's coming up. Or for most people, it's the holy crap, I didn't realise there was another election happening at the same time. Um, which we'll probably talk about before we get on to the rest of it. Um, so, thanks for taking oh, the time out. Thank you, Lance, and this is exciting. Just, just since you're the first regional councillor, yep. council candidate that candidate, I've yep. interviewed, um, can you just give a very brief 60 second overview of what the regional council is because most people are probably not even going to realise it's until they see the voting papers Correct. to be honest. Yeah, and even then they might not realise. So the regional council used to be known as Environment Waikato mm. and it is a uh, it's a council like the city council or Waipa district council or Waikato district council but it sits across the entire region and so geographically uh, that sits at about the Bombay Hills all the way down to my hometown of Turangi, oh, okay. um, over to the Thames Coromandel, and then over to the west coast. And even Quite then, an area. but it's even then, it goes right out from on on the um, in that Thames Coromandel, it goes right out to the twelve mile limit. So there's a truckload of marine uh, New Zealand, which the regional council has responsibility for, oh, as well okay. as the stuff on the ground. Yeah, oh, and it's primarily it's focused on three things. Um, environment, obviously, yeah. um, and then you've got uh, environment, you've got communities, yeah. and you've got economy, and it's that blend of those three. And I'm sure we can talk about that yeah. a little bit later on. And so the regional council is sort of like the, the link between all the little district councils and, and boroughs in in the Waikato area. Yeah, so because they've all got to communicate with you, don't they? Yeah, and look, think of it more as I suppose if there's one word that I would get people to try and become synonymous with the regional council is it's an enabler. So there are sometimes some really big pieces of work that lots of smaller councils or, or localist councils yeah. are working on, but to enable a regional conversation pulling those together, helping elevate them to a, to a regional level, that's the responsibility of the regional council. So it's not this Game of Thrones thing where, you know, one ring to rule them all and, you know, <laughs> come in there and take over. It's an enabler. And, okay. and sometimes once those things are enabled, it actually is quite comfortable in stepping back and letting um, things carry on. Okay. The important part is getting that going uh, at the beginning. Yeah, because there are a number of things that require interaction between multiple councils. Just take the Waikato River, for instance. Yep. It starts at Taupo and ends at Port Waikato. Yep. And it goes through, I don't know how many councils, but it's it goes through a, quite a few areas. Yep. And that's, that's just one example. You've got things like um, public transportation. You've got things like um, economic uh, development. You've got things like um, pest control. There's there's lots of topics. Even sometimes sitting down with central government and saying, "Look, our region is significantly growing." It's that, and I'll talk a little bit about what I call the front row of the New Zealand um, of the New Zealand yeah. um, of New Zealand thing. Um, we've got lots of issues here on a regional basis, which we would like you to be considering and reflecting on, so that when it comes to investing New Zealand taxpayer dollars wisely, actually you shouldn't be forgetting about us. Yeah, well, see that that inland port that's supposedly going to go in just out of out of, out of Hamilton. Rukura, yeah, that's right on the very edge of Hamilton, isn't it? Yes, that's right. So that's um, is it in Hamilton's boundary or outside Hamilton's boundary? Um, from memory, it's within the boundaries of the city, but, uh, but it's it. I look, and I could be quite well on that. Now, look, I think we should be careful that we don't sometimes think of these things as um, which which local government area it sits in. Yeah. So, if we, for example, if you and I jumped in the car now and we drove out to Hamilton Airport, we would actually go through three local authorities, okay. which is Hamilton City, because we're starting here yeah. in, in, at Garden Place. We're going to then drive out to Waipa and then um, Waikato District. So as we're going through Tamahiri, that's Waikato District, and then into Waipa. And, of course, okay. you've still got the regional council sitting in there as well. Yeah. And it's the, what, 20-minute drive out to the airport? Okay. So we shouldn't get too worried about sometimes those um, boundaries that are an imaginary line on a yeah. map. The important part is is that together we can do a lot of really good things. And we actually need to because New Zealand is yeah. needing us to, to do our bit. So as voters, we really, living in this area, we really want um, a regional council that can work well with all the local councils to, and as I said, enable them 
to do what they need to do to make life better for us and the voters? Well, it's a really, it's an interesting one because sometimes it's just the way that you explain to people about things and the importance, and then people kind of go, wow, I never realised that. So as an example, yeah. on the regional council, there are 14 councillors that are picked from that geographical area that oh, I yeah. talked about before. Four of those councillors come from the city of Hamilton. That's quite a significant number from one geographical yeah. area. Now, that um, that regional council is responsible for New Zealand's most precious freshwater asset, Lake Taupo and the Waikato River. Yeah. And if you think about just that singular issue, whether it's around uh, cultural um, importance, recreational importance, uh, commercial importance, power generation, actually just the basic of drinking water, drinking water you know, yeah. that kind yeah. of important. Yeah. Our city chooses four councillors, or if you were looking at it through a commercial lens, directors, yeah. who actually oversee that resource. That's yeah. a real big importance. And so Hamilton citizens have got a real big responsibility in choosing well yeah. to make sure that that regional council does a bloody good job. Yeah. Yet, lot- it's, yet it's, the, yet it's the, the council that most people almost forget exists yep. until they see it on a, on a, on a rates bill. Um, yep. But most most people who don't actually own a house and physically pay the rents and mm. rates themselves are probably not overly familiar with a the existence of the regional council yep. and b the importance of it yep. and how it works and and how it relates to Hamilton City itself. So that's a really good point. So so for example, you're right. You you would not necessarily see the regional council unless you get your rates bill. And the joy of our local government elections is it's not actually just limited to people who own property. If you're on the electoral roll, um, actually you get to have a say in who our councillors are. Um, But if you think about things around the city, so for example, um, we're very blessed to have some really good public transportation. I Mm. think it could be a lot better, but it certainly is not bad. If you look at those GO buses that are charging around the city, they've actually got on the side of the bus... Waikato Regional, Regional Council, Council yeah. and it's not just within the city. Um, one of the neat things that people should try and do is take a ride on the brand new double decker buses that are now running out to Raglan. So that is. Oh, I haven't done the Raglan one. I've, do, I've done the double decker bus. Yep. And I've done the Raglan. Yep. But I haven't done the. So they, they have they have had some double deckers running out to Raglan again on that bus. Waikato Regional, Regional Council. Council. So it's not just even within the city. Um, the buses to Cambridge. The buses to Narawahia to hunt it. Yeah. That's all funded by the regional council in partnership with those local councils enabling better transportation for citizens. So, Because I'd been here for quite a while and it was when I started using the buses fairly often hmm. I actually, when I looked at the timetable and stuff and I, I, I noticed, oh you can get a bus to Raglan, you can get yep. a bus to Taumudu and you can get a bus to Cambridge yep. and you can get a bus to Huntley Yeah. Yes, I've done all that. I haven't done the Tiamudu one, that's yeah. right. And I oh, and I, I, I was a bit stumped until I realised Regional Council ran those. Yeah. I was a bit stumped as to how come Hamilton City Council's got buses that run Correct. way out of the area. Yeah. Once I once I knew it was run by Regional Council, yeah. it made sense. And that's that whole piece around what's the important um, aspect is good public transportation that's regular, reliable and affordable... Yeah. is the important bit. Who gets in there to enable that growth isn't the important bit. The important bit is that it's there. Yeah. And so that's where a regional council can step in and say, well, look, using the, the, the resources of the entire region in smart and clever ways, we can enable better transportation. And, of course, that makes a lot of sense for if you're thinking about environmental outcomes. Yeah. You know, we're reducing the amount of cars on the road. It's not getting rid of cars completely, but no. just reducing it so that those people who are in cars, they can move around quicker. Yeah. Those uh, who I've, don't want to have a car can move around as and well. And I think that's the, the, the other thing that people need to realise. Yeah, it's not getting rid of cars no. as such. It's giving people options. So for those people that want to choose a different form of transport than a car, mm. either because they want to do their bit for the environment yep. or they get sick and tired of sitting in traffic holding onto a steering wheel, or they'd rather to, hold onto an iPad. Or don't want to spend all the money um, on buying a car that loses a huge amount of value the minute you drive it off the lot. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of... And then there's the parking in town and all and, that. And all the rest of it. So it's giving them a service 
that is good enough that they can make the choice, okay, for my trip to work, I'll use the bus. Or for my trip into town, I will use use the bus. And, and the way to, another way to look at it is this is all community owned. Yeah. Because the money that fuels the regional council, and it's pretty big, so there are 500 people that work for the regional council. Every year, their uh, income that they receive primarily through um, rates, yeah. $150 million. Um, there's okay. nearly $700 million worth of infrastructure assets that they own. So this is what you would call a business of significance. And it's owned by you and I. Yeah. We're citizens. I mean, you don't have to be a, a landowner. You don't have to be a... Um, you just have to live and, and be a, a citizen in New Zealand, and it's yours. And it's actually... The nice part, too, is it's intergenerationally focused. Yeah. So it's not just thinking about the next one, two, six months, or three, four years... It should be thinking in, in blocks of 100 years, 200 years, and saying, yeah. what can we do to make this a better place for us all? And just to come back for a second before we get on to the sure. rest of what we're here for, you talked about you don't have to own land, etc., etc., to vote. No. A lot of people vote that are registered voters now, yeah. um, and particular people who, who, not, who don't vote and things like this, yeah. um, a lot of them don't realise how limited voting was if you go back enough generations oh, yeah. you you used to have to be go back far enough you used to have to be male and a landowner yep to, to vote um, now all that's irrelevant yeah all you have to do is 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 be a registered voter who lives in in, in the area um, I mean, as New Zealanders, we take great pride in the fact that as a nation we recognize before anyone else in the world did the importance of women being able to have the vote. Yeah. And one of the beautiful things about our country is that we know that there is no coercion, um, no, no arm twisting that's done to make you yeah. vote in a certain way, that once your ballot is submitted, that it is accurately recorded and the results of that then delivered, and it's a true democracy. So there's a lot of countries around the world, their citizens would give their eye teeth just to have the basic... G'day, mate, how are you? Um, the basic infrastructure... Yeah. Um, that would give that. And, and we've got it for free. The only thing that's lacking is actually a few more people realising, actually, we should we should do our, 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 our one good deed as a citizen and just make a bit of an effort. Yeah. Um, and certainly as a candidate, you know, I'm, I'm really keen, because I don't have all the answers, I'm, I'm wanting my community to be engaging with me, to talk to me about the stuff that they're worried about, so that when I'm, if I'm privileged enough to be elected can make better decisions in line with what the community is needing and what the community is thinking yeah. about. I was talking to someone at the... We're at a cafe, the yeah. outdoor cafe at the moment, and there's someone sitting at one of the other tables. Yeah. He's from Saudi, I think it was, and we were talking about... Because uh, he uh, he was going to sit at this table and ask him if he wouldn't mind sitting at that one. Yeah. So I could interview you at this one with yeah. Hamilton in the background. He said, oh, you're sweet, so he's really good about that. Um, and we were talking about voting and stuff, and he said how lucky we are because in his country... He doesn't get to vote. No. Here, we do. I mean, and, and, and it almost seems to us to be crazy. How could that be? But that is the case. So yeah. it's a precious thonga that we have yeah. here in New Zealand. We, sh- we, should, we should respect it and, and, and use it. My father always thought of it as a, as a responsibility because, in his view, he said, you're choosing people to represent you now to shape the future of your town for future generations. Yep. So as an individual living and voting now, you have a responsibility to the future generations yep. in your area. And he always took that seriously, and I was brought up with that. Yep. So, yeah. well, I mean, I've got two grown-up daughters, a 28-year-old and a 23-year-old, and you know, I, I know you know, a lot of their friends that they went to school with, some of those friends now have got kids of their own, and that's the next generation of New Zealanders. And, and I would like to think that by using some of the skills and uh, experiences that I've had to make good decisions that are going to benefit those kids and their grandkids and their great-grandkids. And it's that again, it's that yeah. intergenerational piece. So what else would you like to know about the regional council? <laughs> <laughs> I think that pretty much covers the regional council. Okay. Yeah.